behavior. In today's show, we will learn about suicide prevention, late night at the fog, and the schedule for tomorrow. Hi, I'm Cade. And I'm Sage, and you're watching SVTV. We are making stories by teens for teens. Creating a platform, finding character, and giving others a voice. This is SVTV. Emery caught up with Mr. Alexander to talk about tomorrow's schedule. Hey, Mike, I'm here with Mr. Alexander, and he's going to talk to us about tomorrow's schedule. So, what's going on? Well, tomorrow's kind of a, a different kind of a day before you have your nice four-day weekend. Um, so, the seniors are going to do a community service activity based on what... Um, career and life planning class they have. They're going to go to various places around and have a morning of community service, which I think is always fun. And um, it gives them that sense of accomplishment, hopefully. Um, juniors are taking a practice ACT. So the main reason we're doing a practice ACT is kind of threefold. One, you never do a three-hour test when you're in high school. And this is a chance for you to sit down and practice that without the pressure of taking the real thing. And then in February, juniors have the opportunity to take a free ACT. And so hopefully by taking this test and seeing what it's like and the time constraints will help you do better on that test because you don't want that test in February be the first time you ever sit down and take a three-hour test. So this is your opportunity um, to do that. Plus, you're going to grade that together in your CLP class, and it's also going to be given to you to take home, so you'll have all the answers, and it's a really good study tool. So it's really beneficial for you tomorrow. The sophomores and freshmen are also taking an ACT, but the sophomores and freshmen are taking like grade-level appropriate ACT tests, um, which will also give them some good feedback. They also will get the answers back, plus has some really good um, career stuff that, they, that we'll send back to them. So what we're really trying to do is give you multiple opportunities to work on taking a time test because you never do that really during your, during your high school career. And we want you to be the best prepared when you do take the ACT so you do the best you possibly can. All right. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Now back to your anchors. I hope that cleared up any questions about tomorrow. 9th through 11th grade students need to get plenty of rest the night before and eat a good breakfast. Also remember to bring a couple of number two pencils. Now on to your announcements. Students interested in Washburn Tech, the October 30th testing is filling up fast. You have tomorrow to sign up. See Ms. Conley in the counseling office to sign up. The sheriff's office is looking to hire dispatchers. You must be 18 years old and be able to type 35 words per minute. Starting salary is over $16 per hour. If you're interested, please see Ms. Noble in the Calp Center. Now let's send it over to Cade for the sports. What is this chest for? This chest is for trick-or-treat so kids can eat. You can donate your food that is non-perishable. The calp with the most donations by the end of the month gets an ice cream party. Sponsored by International Thespian Society. SHS Theater and FFA are hosting Haunted Trail on October 23rd. The kids' trail is from 4 to 6 and it's $5. The adult trail is from 7 to 10 and is $6. You get $1 off your ticket with canned food donations. The Lady Vikes cross country team finished fourth place at the Centennial League meet. Medalists were Bethany Druce, Susanna Mosqueda, and Tara Spencer. Five of the girls had lifetime personal records as well. Senior night for the Vikings soccer team is Thursday, October 24th against Topeka High. There will be candy, prizes, and other fun giveaways during the varsity game starting at 6.15. Sophomores, 
Seniors, if you'd like to go out for wrestling, a sign-up table will be set up in the East Commons immediately after school today and tomorrow. Some students attended late night at the Fog. We asked them how it was. That's how we're supposed to be Living young and wild and free Snoop Dogg made his appearance at the Kansas Jayhawks traditional Late Night at the Fog I thought the show was great I had lots of fun um, The light show was great The people were great Snoop Dogg was great His performance was great You know, a lot of fun, big energy Well, I heard there was a late night show at Allen Fieldhouse uh, with Snoop Dogg there, and he had some acrobatic dancers, and there was a light show, and I heard it was a lot of fun. Hey, son, give me some for them. Bill Self had a lot to say about this event. As you can tell, there were lots of mixed emotions at the Snoop Dogg event. In terms of ages and differences of point of views, yes, I think it was appropriate. Seeing him an actual person, is, it hits different than in the car speakers. I can tell you that. It was lots of fun. That looked like a lot of fun. Now over to Josh with the weather. All right, good afternoon to you. Today, we are trying something new. We are using the green screen. Now, we're still experimenting with this, so there are some issues, but bear with us as we fine tune this over the next few months. Here's your forecast headlines for the next few days. Today is looking very windy, wind gusts upwards of 35 miles per hour at times, and then tomorrow, we will warm up significantly with highs in the upper 60s to around 70 before a strong cold front arrives. And that's going to leave us much cooler by Thursday. If you thought this morning was cold, just wait. Thursday is looking quite a bit cooler. Now for tomorrow, there is a haunted trail tomorrow evening. 4 o'clock is when the kids trail starts. It looks like we'll be in the upper 60s, partly cloudy skies. Then a few more clouds for the adult trail, 61 degrees at 7 o'clock. So if you are heading out, get out there early because by 10 o'clock, our wind chills will be, will be falling down into the upper 40s under a mostly cloudy sky. Now Thursday, again, is when that cold front arrives. And there is a chance of rain, but I think it's going to stay in far southeastern Kansas and over into Missouri. So we don't have to worry about rain here on Thursday, maybe a little bit later in the weekend, but Thursday should be dry. For your weekend outlook as a whole, take a look at this. We get four days off. Thursday and Friday will be spent in the 50s. Cloudy skies Thursday, mostly sunny Friday, and then... Look at this, the 60s return for the weekend with partly to mostly cloudy skies. So it's going to be a great weekend once we get to Saturday. Seven day forecast shows again that nice day coming up Wednesday, cooler on Thursday. But then take a look, our temperatures in the 50s and 60s with that rain chance Saturday night and the longer range. So this is taking a look at next week. We could be talking about some spooky weather, below average temperatures, and above average precipitation. There could be a couple major storm systems coming up next week. Now, Sage and Cade, back to you. Thanks, Josh. September was Suicide Prevention Month, but that shouldn't stop us from preventing suicide year-round. Sophie Sparks talked to a local mental health professional to learn about the warning signs of suicide and how we can help prevent it. Suicide. It's a horrible subject that continues to be more of an issue as the years go on. It is one of the leading causes of death in the world and could be affecting someone you know. Where you're from, what you look like, uh, gender, doesn't matter, anyone is um, um, affected by suicide. 
Rhonda Sparks is a social worker at a school here in Topeka. She deals with teens struggling with suicidal thoughts every day and wants everyone to be aware of the signs that someone dealing with these thoughts could be showing. There's no really one particular thing that indicates someone might be feeling suicidal, um, but what you really want to look for are changes in patterns of behavior of, of anyone, um, eating habits, sleeping habits, um, what kind of activities they uh, participate in, if they isolate a lot is, is an indicator. Um, um, if their hygiene is really poor and they stop taking showers, um, um, lots of tearfulness, looking depressed, um, just like I said, anything, any changes in just normal ways of behaving is what you look for. She also believes that with an increase in social media and technology usage, people are more likely to feel alone. When you spend more time on your phone and interacting on your phone, um, then with real people and um, being with people, it increases your um, isolation and, and your uh, vulnerability to suicidal ideation. The best thing we can do to help people struggling with suicide is to focus on prevention. Education is huge. Um, I know the schools, and especially the school I'm working in, um, they require all staff to be educated on signs to look for and what to do when you notice something. Um, education's huge. Um, you need to be in areas that have mental health centers, um, places that you can call um, should you feel um, suicidal or know someone that feels that way. Um, you need to have those services available. And it really doesn't matter who you talk to, um, the people you're comfortable with, you talk to them, your family, your friends, um, and then beyond that, then seek mental health professionals in your community. Suicide is a dark subject that no one wants to talk about, but talking about it is the best way to raise awareness. Through awareness and education, we can all work together to prevent suicide. If someone you know has talked to you about thoughts of suicide or self-harm, you need to let someone know. A counselor, teacher, parent, or any trusted adult will be able to get them help. Please don't hesitate to tell someone, even if that person doesn't want you to. It's better for them to be mad at you than it would be to lose a life. Hey, we're going to have a mess up schedule next week. We won't even see you until then. Have a great rest of your day, Vikes.